Hello and welcome to the Association of Learned and Professional Society Publishers first Careers Hub videos. Today I'm going to be talking to you about journals and hopefully share some of my experience in scholarly publishing to help you understand the basics of scholarly publishing. In this first of a new series of short videos we'll be looking at what's something that we all will be working on or have heard about but have perhaps never really looked at the history or development of in, in detail and that's the journal. So firstly what is the journal? Well to go really down to basics the word is originally from the Latin diurnus meaning daily and it identifies something that's been done on a regular basis or something that's done periodically and sometimes you'll hear journals also known as periodicals. They've been around for quite a long time and over the years the name journal has stuck and comes to mean a host of different um, publications. Now whilst the original word was in Latin the, the, the use of this word actually started in France in the 15th century and if you think about some, a journal being something like a diary where people um, wanted to share information, wanted to record what was going on, you can start to see why the word journal was first used. Now, journals haven't actually changed that very much in uh, over the centuries. The very first journals were published in 1665, and actually the two first journals were published at the same time, um, a French journal called the Journal de Scavon and an English journal the philosophical transactions of the Royal Society. Now, when you actually look at the original publications, they're very similar to what we know today. They had a short introduction, which is similar to the abstracts that we now see in every article. They included the basics of, of, of scientific reportage. They included methodologies, results, and also um, over time, they developed references to other works that had been done before. So really the journals that we first saw in the 17th century didn't change a huge amount all the way up really until the 1990s. Now I use this quote because this is really key to the development of journals over the years. So Sir Isaac Newton was the person who said that, that research was like standing on the shoulders of giants. In other words, journals were really important because they were a record of experiments and research that had gone on before. And current scholars were able to use that research in order to create new knowledge. So this really important um, idea carries on right up to this day. And this really underpins the whole idea of, of scholarly publishing um, in total. So this is one reason why journals are still relevant. Um, and what we see is that the the standing on the shoulders of giants represents a kind of life cycle. And despite the fact that journals have evolved quite considerably, particularly in recent years, that research life cycle still remains. People do their research, they submit that research in article form to journals usually. Those articles are evaluated by editors, they go through a peer review um, service where they're judged by their peers. And when they're accepted, they're produced and published online, still in hard copy, and they're then accessible for other researchers to then use as part of their research. And we see that the life cycle carries on. Now, all that's happened with the advent of, of the internet in recent years is that this kind of sharing and accessibility has become much easier. But it's also started to shape and develop and evolve journals in a slightly different way. Um, what we're seeing now is that the, since journals started to move online in the 1990s, accessibility and the sharing of knowledge has improved, but it's also represented a challenge to the journal. Before 1990, journals were typically distributed in hard copy uh, for the in payment of a subscription. So university libraries and other libraries would pay the publisher to have their, art, um, their journals delivered on a regular basis, periodically. So what's happened is that with the advent of the internet has also enabled the advent of open access, where the author pays for the article to be distributed online. Um, this is a much cheaper way of doing things usually, and has opened up 
uh, many, many more journals and different models of publications. So where beforehand journals were paid for on a subscription basis and disseminated in hard copies, that still happens, but we now also have open access where journals are put online and can be distributed um, very much more quickly um, to anybody who has an internet connection. And so this has then started to develop different accessibility models. Now what's also happened with the advent of the internet is that it also removed barriers to entry. So the numbers of journals in the last few decades has absolutely exploded. Um, it's estimated that around World War II, there were only maybe one or 2000 journals in total. Nowadays, it's actually very difficult to put a figure on that, but there's probably at least 100,000 journals that are either currently in use or are certainly accessible, um, even if they're not currently being published. So the number of journals has absolutely exploded. And what's also happened is that what we've seen is that rather than journals be the sole container of article research, we've seen article level developments. In other words, universities now have um, their repositories where the authors, the researchers at that university, they can place their articles in a repository and they'll be openly accessible, not just to people in the university, but to anybody. There are publishing platforms that have developed where rather than having um, journals on the platform, they just have the articles and the articles may well be curated and placed together in, in themes or something, but they're not curated by an editor um, like we've traditionally seen with journals. Um, metrics have also evolved. So rather than judging whether a journal or not is good, judging by its metrics, how often it's been cited, etc., you're now able to look at that at an article level. So what we can see is that the advent of the internet has, has weakened the primacy of the academic journal. Let's not to say it's not still important, it still is the primary use of disseminating research um, globally, but it's not as uh, powerful. It's certainly not the only option that was available just 30 years ago. So in summary, what we've seen is that the journals have developed over the last 350 years. And if you're looking for a simple uh, snappy definition for what a journal is, it can be defined as an edited collection of academic research articles that are published periodically. Whilst they've been around for a long time, real changes have happened in the last 30 years, essentially since the advent of the internet in the 1990s. And whilst journals are still used by researchers to report their findings and share their results, they still are preeminent in the way that they distribute those research and, sh and share research, but they're not the only option now. And article-based publishing has become much more common. So thank you for listening. That was our first of our careers hub courses. The second one, and I hope you join me for that, is what is scholarly publishing? Thank you very much.